IELTS Reading Lesson 3 True False Not Given and Yes No Not Given In the previous lesson I gave you a list of basic exam techniques. We're going to use the same techniques today and maybe one or two other tips as well for this type of question. Here are the techniques that I talked about in the previous lesson. I'm not going to go through them in detail, so pause the video and read them if you want to. And I'll repeat what I said in the last lesson, that numbers 4 and 5 are the most important. I call these the keyword technique. This is how you really find answers in the reading test. You underline keywords in the question, then search for those words in the passage. Compare carefully between the question and the passage to try to get the answer. We'll try to use these techniques and one or two others for today's questions about true, false, not given and yes, no, not given. First, let's look at the difference. Is there a difference between the following true, false, not given and yes, no, not given? The answer is yes, a very small difference. They use true, false when the passage is about facts. Is this statement true according to the passage or not? So the question will say something like this. Are the statements true, false or not given, according to the information in the passage? On the other hand, the exams use yes and no when the passage is about the writer's views or opinions. So it's not about facts this time, it's the writer giving some views. And the reason they say yes or no instead of true or false is because the question will ask you, do the statements agree with the views expressed by the writer? The words yes and no answer the question, do the statements agree? Do the statements agree? Yes, they agree. Or no, they don't agree. That's why we need to write yes or no instead of true or false for this type of question. So we've seen this small difference between facts and views, but here's my tip. These differences are not important. We can approach both question types in the same way. Just think correct, incorrect or not given. Now that you understand this small difference between these two types of questions, we can forget about it completely. Don't worry any more about the difference between true and false and yes or no, because we're going to approach them in exactly the same way. Before we do our main exercise for today, let's look at some quick examples. These examples come from my blog, so you may have seen them before, but I think they're useful, just to show the techniques. The first example will be for an answer that's going to be true. Remember, we don't look at the passage first, we go straight to the questions. So here's the first question. It is possible, but not normal, to say powerful T. And this is a true, false or not given question. Well, the first thing before looking at the passage is to underline some keywords. I underlined possible, not normal, say powerful T. I think powerful T is our main phrase, our main keywords, because they're very strong words that we can search for easily. Let's read the passage now at normal speed, remember, no no skimming or scanning, we just read at normal speed. While the same meaning could be conveyed through the roughly equivalent powerful T, the fact is that English prefers to speak of T in terms of being strong rather than in terms of being powerful. So I'm sure you noticed powerful T in there, that was the easiest phrase to see from the question. Now we need to look for, is it possible to say powerful T? Well, back to the beginning, while the same meaning could be conveyed through the roughly equivalent powerful T. Well, if the meaning could be conveyed by saying powerful T, that does mean it's possible. Could be means possible, and convey a meaning can mean the same as say. So yes, it is possible to say powerful T, but is it normal? Let's keep reading. After powerful T, the fact is that English prefers to speak of T in terms of being strong rather than in terms of being powerful. So English prefers strong rather than powerful. That means it's not really normal 
to say powerful T. It's much more normal to say strong T. So the answer is true. Now let's look at a yes question. Very, very similar. Remember, the only difference is that this will be the opinion or view of the writer. Apart from that, we're doing the exactly, exactly the same thing. Here's the question. The information age is characterized by our exposure to an abundance of data. Underline keywords, information age, abundance of data, and maybe our exposure. Then we go to the passage. The information, the information age now buries us in data coming at us from every which way. This is easy. We saw the information age and now we can see buries us in data. That means the same as an abundance of data. There's too much data. And one other key word that you can see there is we've got our in the question and us in the answer as well. They're just making sure that we're talking about the same people. Let's move on to a false answer now. Here's the question. He dedicated the whole day to his work. Underline keywords, dedicated, whole day, work. And then we go to the passage. At noon, he ceased work for the day and spent half an hour practicing the flute on which he became quite a skilled performer. Hopefully you noticed ceased work for the day. What time did he cease work? Cease means stop. What time did he stop working? At noon. So if he stopped working at noon, he definitely didn't dedicate the whole day to work. So the answer is false. Let's look at a no answer. Again, it's just the same as a false answer, but it's going to be about a writer expressing views or opinions. Here's the question. The majority of choices we make on a daily basis are conscious decisions. I've underlined majority of choices, daily, conscious decisions. Let's go to the passage. Most of the choices, well I can underline that already, most of the choices means the majority of choices. We make each day, daily, may feel like the products of well-considered decision-making, conscious decisions, well-considered decision-making. At the moment it looks like it's a yes answer, but then we read on, but they're not, they're habits. So they are not conscious decisions, these choices that we make, they are habits, so the answer is no. Again, it was just about finding the keywords and comparing the question with the passage. Finally, let's look at a not given example. Here's the question. Houdini was more successful in Europe than in America. What are we searching for? We're searching for, well, first we've got a name, Houdini. Then more successful, Europe than America. Notice we've got a comparison there. More successful in Europe than in America. But the strongest keyword to search for, of course, is the name Houdini. Going to the passage, he first attracted attention as Harry Handcuff Houdini, underline that, on a tour of Europe where he challenged police forces to keep him locked up. We found something about Houdini and about Europe, but nothing about America and no comparison about more successful. So we have to say not given for that one. Not given means we don't know because we just don't have enough information to give an answer. Now, let's make sure we understand when to put true, when to put false, and when to choose not given. Remember, true or yes is when the correct information is given in the passage, and you can definitely show that. False or no is when different information is given, contradicting the statement. So whatever the question statement says, the information in the passage is different, maybe opposite. It proves that the statement is wrong. And for not given, we don't know the answer because there isn't enough information or sometimes there isn't any information. Two more quick things to remember. The first one is our main technique. Find the keywords and then compare the question and passage carefully. That's how we found all of those answers in the examples. 
The other thing, which I haven't mentioned before, is that answers are always in the correct order in the passage for this type of question. If you have a section about true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given, you should be confident that the answers are going to come in order in the passage. That really helps you. You don't have to go back to the beginning for each question. Now we can go to today's example test questions. If you haven't done this already, print the attached worksheet and try the exercise. I'm going to go through the answers now, so if you haven't done the questions already, it won't make as much sense and you won't learn as much. Anyway, here we go. The first thing to do when you have an IELTS reading test is read the title. The title of this one is The Development of Sanitation Systems. Sanitation is about dealing with wastewater in a place. Next, what do we do? Well, we go straight to the first question. We don't waste time reading the passage. The first question is this. Early sanitation systems became more intricate as city populations grew. So, true, false or not given. That's what we have to decide. I'm going to underline some keywords first. As you can see, most of them are keywords in this case. Early sanitation systems, more intricate, city populations grew. Now, probably the hardest word in there is intricate. If you don't know that word, it might limit you, it might stop you from getting the right answer. So IELTS reading is a vocabulary test, remember. Intricate means complex or complicated. So is it true that early systems of sanitation became more complicated when the city populations got bigger, grew. Now we need to go to the beginning of the passage and read at normal speed. The first sanitation systems, that could be the same as early, were built in the prehistoric Middle East, in the southeast of the modern country of Iran, near Zabol. An inverted siphon system, along with glass-covered clay pipes, was used for the first time in the palaces of Crete, Greece, it is still in working condition after about 3,000 years. So we found the first keywords, early sanitation systems, but we haven't found anything about more intricate or city populations grew. So we need to continue to the next paragraph. And here we do find the answer. We read higher population densities. That means the same as populations grew. Required more complex sewer collection and conveyance systems to maintain sanitary conditions in crowded cities. What other keywords have we got there? We've got more complex means more intricate. We've got sewer systems, which is the sanitation systems again. And we've also got cities. So the high population densities are in the cities. So this must be true because the early sanitation systems did become more complex as the cities grew. Let's try the same techniques for number two. Question two. The ancient water management systems of the Indus Valley are still in use today. True, false or not given. Well, I'd underline first Indus Valley. That's the easiest thing to search for because it's a name. Also, then we could look for ancient and systems and still in use today. So basically, are these Indus Valley systems still in use today? Remember, we don't need to go back to the beginning of the text. We can continue reading where we finished question one. So here's the rest of the paragraph after question one. The ancient cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro of the Indus Valley civilization. Well, let's stop there. We've already seen ancient and Indus Valley. So we're in the right place to get this answer. Indus Valley Civilization constructed complex networks of brick-lined sewage. Well, networks of sewage could be the same as water management systems. The only thing left to find is, are these systems still in use today? So let's carry on from the word sewage. Drains from around 2600 BC and also had outdoor flush toilets connected to this network. No information about today yet. The urban areas of the Indus Valley Civilization provided public and private baths. Sewage was disposed 
through underground drains built with precisely laid bricks and a sophisticated water management system with numerous reservoirs was established. Still nothing about today, nothing about whether these systems are still in use today. So it's looking like a not given answer for me, but just to be safe we could quickly check the beginning of the next paragraph. Roman towns and garrisons in the United Kingdom. Now this has gone on to a new topic now. It's not about the Indus Valley anymore, it's about Roman towns. So I think that we can safely say not given. However, one technique is, if you're not sure, miss that question, go on to the next question and then return later. We know that the answers go in order, so if we can find number three, then we know that the answer for question two should be somewhere between numbers one and three. But for today, we'll leave it there. Not given is the correct answer for number two. Let's move on to number three. Some sewage networks built by the Romans in the UK were made out of wood. The keywords I'm underlining, Romans in the UK, sewage networks again, and made out of wood. We go to the next part of the passage. Roman towns and garrisons, we've got the Roman in the United Kingdom, so we're in the right place, between 46 BC and 400 AD, had complex sewer networks, so we found the sewage networks, sometimes constructed out of hollowed out elm logs. Well, the answer's there if you understand the vocabulary, hollowed out elm logs. Elm is a type of tree and logs are pieces of wood from a tree. So made out of wood, well we've got the word made and constructed, made out of wood, constructed out of logs, pieces of wood. And there's a few other key words, we've got some and sometimes there. So if we look at all of that, some networks, networks sometimes, built by the Romans in the UK, yes, were made out of wood, constructed out of elm logs. So all of that means that it's true. The information in the question and the passage is the same. There's an interesting point from that question to remember. IELTS reading is a vocabulary test. Did you know, for example, that the word log means a piece of wood from a tree? If you did, you know the vocabulary, the answer would be easy. If you didn't, you're going to have difficulty getting the correct answer. Now I'm going to quickly give you the answers for questions four to seven on the worksheet. So here's question four. Rome had the most developed of all ancient sanitation systems. The key words here were most developed. This is a comparison and there was no information in the passage about a comparison between Rome and other ancient systems. So the answer has to be not given. Then we go on to number five. By the time of Queen Elizabeth I, the majority of cities had built sewers for waste water. So you'd look for the keywords Queen Elizabeth I, majority of cities had built sewers. And here's the part of the text where we find the answer. So we find Queen Elizabeth I there in the middle. And then we find the keywords that give us the answer. Most cities did not have a functioning sewer system. So the answer must be false because it's the opposite. Cities did not have a functioning sewer system at this time. Then on to number six. Poor sanitation systems during the industrial era posed a significant health risk. Looking for the keywords poor sanitation, industrial era and health risk. Here's the part of the passage and we find the key words during the Industrial Revolution, that's in the Industrial Era, and outbreak of disease could be a health risk, of course, but also we have sewerage systems, that's the sanitation systems, and this is the key word really, inadequate. Inadequate means poor, so we do know that they were poor sanitation systems, they weren't good enough they were inadequate and again the word risk comes at the end so all of that together means that the answer is true. 
Finally, number seven, the world's first complete sewage network was constructed in the USA. You're looking for the world's first complete sewage network, and was it in the USA? Here's the part of the text that you needed. The first comprehensive sewer system was built in Hamburg. That tells you everything. The first one was in Hamburg, Germany, not in the USA. Even though the United States is mentioned, it's clear that the correct answer was Germany, Hamburg. So we have to put false for that one. That's the end of that exercise and my analysis of the answers. Hopefully you've made a keyword table from this lesson and you'd put your keywords in the questions and similar words in the passage in the two columns. Here are some of the words that I chose from this lesson. More intricate, more complex, made out of wood, constructed out of logs, majority of cities, most cities, poor sanitation, sewerage so inadequate, the industrial era during the industrial revolution, posed a health risk, source for the outbreak of disease, complete network and comprehensive system. That's the end of today's lesson. In the next lesson, we'll look at paragraph headings questions.